Earlier this week, we had the spectacle of a Labour Prime Minister standing in the Rose Garden of Downing Street, delivering one of the most feeble, pitiful and dishonest speeches you will ever hear. He was feeble in his claim to say that he was tough with the trade unions in pay negotiations. That was after he immediately rolled over to appease his paymasters at the expense of the British taxpayer. He was pitiful to claim that he is locking up criminals after spending years in Parliament voting against tougher prison sentences for violent criminals and sex offenders and campaigning to block the deportation of dangerous foreign national offenders. He was completely dishonest with his complaints and his claims about the British economy that he has inherited, which were clearly made to justify his nasty financial assault on the very people who deserve dignity in their retirement and who have spent their working lives contributing to the very fabric of our nation. That's our parents and our grandparents. From the painful and damaging tax rises upon Britain's hard-working families and businesses that we now know are coming, to the rot and the corruption of Starmer's cronies being appointed to the civil service, all we have seen over the last 56 days is a Labour government of self-service, politics without principle. While Labour are trash-talking Britain for their own desperate means, I see a proud and resilient country, a country that knows that we face challenges, but is determined to overcome them and is hungry for success. I see a country that pulled together to deliver the most successful rollout of the COVID vaccine. I see a country of world leaders in fintechs, in science, AI, agriculture, renewable technologies, just to name a few. And as we've seen in the Olympics and the Paralympics, a country of inspiring and world-beating sportsmen and women, we are not called Great Britain for nothing. And with our country now at the mercy of a self-serving Labour government, a reality that gets more frightening as each and every day passes, I will ensure that our party has all the tools needed to take them on and to send Starmer packing. For the Conservative Party... For it is our party, the Conservative Party. Unlike Labour, politics has always been about something much more than gaining power. It has been about serving the nation. We are a patriotic party, a national party who believes in the union and the matters which concern hard-working people every single day. And I will lead us from opposition to government so that we can serve the British people again and give them back the freedoms and the dignity that Labour would take away from them. And to do that, we will work with one team, with one voice, and with a meritocratic team built on our collective skills and experience. My clear offer to our Conservative parliamentary colleagues is this. Support me to be our next party leader, and I will lead you and support you to be the success we all want to see for our country and for our party. The professionalism I will bring to the party will restore our ability to campaign so that you can be leaders in your communities and take on and defeat the other parties challenging on us from wherever they come on the political spectrum. The reds, the yellows, the greens, and that non-conservative shade of blue which occasionally pops up at election time. And if you back me to be your leader, I will unite our parliamentary party. We are 121 MPs in Westminster. We are blessed with talent and experience from a wide range of backgrounds. And I promise you that under my leadership, every one of you will have a role to play in supporting our efforts to be the strongest and most effective team possible. Because I have seen before what we can achieve together when we work together to promote our values and serve our nation. As a Treasury Minister, I worked alongside our then Chancellor, cutting taxes and delivering economic stability for Britain. At DWP, alongside the formidable Ian Duncan Smith, we worked to transform the welfare system and support people into employment and better paid work, putting into practice that conservative belief of the dignity and security that work provides. In DFID, I led the way for the transparency and effectiveness of overseas aid and tackled its exploitation and abuse. And when I was Home Secretary, we increased police officers to record numbers and gave them the powers to fight crime. 
We gave victims of crime more rights and improved services and support for the survivors of domestic abuse. We ended free movement and brought in reforms to our immigration and asylum system. We kept our country safe with new measures to protect our national security and our country from terrorist threats and hostile state actors. We did all of that and more. You have in me a leader who will fight for the British people and show how our values offer solutions and challenges to Britain as we face them today. Now, I want to address our amazing party members, our incredible grassroots activists, some of whom have joined us today from around the country. You are the heart and soul of our party. And for over 30 years, since the late, great Cecil Parkinson recruited me to join that cause, I have been proud to be a grassroots conservative and to campaign across the country with you. Come rain or shine, in good times and in bad, you pound the pavements and knock on doors and deliver leaflets. You raise the funds to fight local campaigns. And you come face to face with the electorate, doing your best to persuade them to put their cross in the box of Conservative candidates standing from election. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for everything that you do. Under my leadership, you'll no longer be taken for granted. I will give you back control of your party. And I have a plan for my first 100 days as leader to get the central party, that CCHQ, working for you. I will empower you with more say over the policies we develop, drawing upon your expertise and ideas that you have. I will put in place a process for an elected chair of our party. And I'm going to reform the controversial and unacceptable parliamentary candidate selection process, which saw candidates... <laughs> which saw candidates imposed upon local associations, parachuted down because they were a chosen favourite. What CCHQ will do is to support the vetting, the training and the development of candidates, support you all to recruit the brightest and the best to put themselves forward to stand for our great party, and support local associations in target seats to select the candidates you want within the next two years so we can lead our conservative communities back in that fight back for our party. But our fight back is more than just winning back the seats at the next general election. Under my leadership, our party will fight to win seats across every level of government. And that starts next year with the local elections. We have some brilliant leaders in local government championing conservative values. And I know because I've worked with them around the country. From County Councillor Kevin Bentley, you heard from him earlier on, to Baroness Theresa O'Neill in Bexley, to our elected mayor in Teesside, Ben Houcham. They have all been at the forefront of delivering services to local communities, giving pride and hope to the places they live and to the people they serve. My heart wept to see the loss of so many hard-working Conservative councillors and local leaders over the last two years. Thousands of dedicated public servants, who we all know within our local associations, delivering conservative values for their communities, now no longer able to do so. I promise you this, that under my leadership, we will once again become the largest party in local government. <laughs> That's not all. We will campaign to hold the seats that we have, campaign to win back the seats that we have lost, and I will not stop at campaigning to get Conservative councillors elected. I know the incredible work that our Conservative Police and Crime Commissioners do. We have some here today, like Roger Hurst, Alison Hernandez, Rupert Matthews, Caroline Henry, David Lloyd, and Andrew Snowden, who is now one of our MPs. I've seen what they have done to recruit more police officers to fight crime and support the victims of crime. We lost too many of them in May's elections, and I'm going to campaign to get Conservatives back into those roles. <laughs> and here in London, we will work tirelessly to get a Conservative mayor elected to our great city once more. I want to put
put to an end Sadiq Khan's high taxes, his soaring crime rates, his war on motorists, and the rotten governance that's taking place across our great capital city. And it is because we are the Conservative and Unionist Party that under my leadership, we will support colleagues in Wales and in Scotland to get them ready to fight the elections in the Senate and the Scottish Parliament in 2026. Now, I was in Scotland last week, and I cannot tell you how much damage the divisive and the corrupt nationalists have done to that proud nation. While they have obsessed over independence and camper vans, Scotland has suffered with failing educational standards in what was once a great system. Scotland has the highest rate of drug deaths in Europe, and Scotland has the highest tax levels than the rest of the United Kingdom. The people of Scotland deserve better, and we will offer them a brighter future. And in Wales, people have suffered for 25 years under Labour rule. A self-serving Labour government that Starmer has boasted will be the model that he wants to follow in, the, in, in England. With public services performing so poorly in Wales, with Welsh businesses battling government burdens, bureaucracy and outright hostility to enterprise, and a self-serving Labour government only interested in spending £120 million of taxpayers' money, increasing the size of the Senate and giving Wales more politicians. We will work, I will work with our party in Wales to expose the failure of Labour. Now to our members, wherever you are across our union, I say this, support me to be our next leader and I will turn our party into a professional, competent election winning machine. I'll make you proud again to wear our blue rosette and go out there and campaign for our great party. Now I've spoken to our MPs and to our party members. Now I want to speak to the British people. In me, you have a leader who understands the challenges of our country, and I will guide you through them. I will never promise you what I can't deliver, and I will never tell you what I think you may want to hear because it sounds easy or simple to deliver. What I will offer you are credible and compelling plans for the future of our country one which is anchored by our shared conservative and British values. That is why I will always fight for your freedoms, free speech, free enterprise, and the freedom to keep more of what you earn and to live your lives how you choose. That's why I will always champion innovation over regulation, technology over taxation when it comes to improving our energy security. And that's why I will always stand up for law and order and strong border controls. That's why I will always support people across Britain to have their say about the future directions of their community. And that is why I will always promote choice and opportunity over state control. In me, you have a leader who offers you experience and strength and who has spent their life fighting and winning battles. You do not get to stand here in my shoes if you have not faced down adversary, dealt with setbacks and got through some difficult times. You might even say that those experiences have given me a core of steel. And in me, you have a conservative leader motivated by values and a lifetime of public service. For my record of public service did not begin in May 2010 when I was elected Member of Parliament for Whitton. Nor did it begin when I worked with William Hague to put the fire back in the belly of our party after 1997. It began more than 40 years ago, working in my parents' shop serving customers on the shop floor, helping in a small family business at the heart of their local community, and being sent out on my bike by my father to deliver groceries and to check on regular customers who may not have been seen for a while. I am proud of the public service I gave 40 years ago, as I am of the public service I have given in one of the great offices of state. Public service is not just a phrase or a soundbite for me. It is ingrained in every fibre of my being, from working on the shop floor, to being a proud mother, to standing up and representing the part of Essex that I stand in, and to putting our national interests first in government. I will always give committed and dedicated service to our country. And under my leadership, 
the Conservative and Unionist Party will serve every part of the United Kingdom with professionalism. We will work with humility to earn back your trust. And we will be one united team, with one voice, promoting our shared values, serving our nation, and we will unite to win. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.